as well. I asked you earlier if the the Warriors took the Kings' best punch and walked away with a victory. F- flip it. Did the Kings take the Warriors' best punch yesterday? Uh, I think they did. You They did? Okay. I think they did. I don't think the Warriors can play. This, this group of Warriors, I don't think they can play you're not, much better you're not, than what they did. You're not frightened about the impending Game 6 clay? Oh, Game 6 clay. Oh, okay. Just, just Clay. asking. Clay played really well yesterday. Clay, yeah, but that's it. Clay's, Clay, Clay's played really well the whole series. Yeah, Clay hit some shots yesterday where there was no defense. Like, not saying there was nobody there. It's like there's no, no defending one who that shot. Yeah. Like, that's an amazing shot that uh, damn near only Clay Thompson seems to be able to hit. So I think I think they played. I think they played their best. Now, now people will get upset. You know, Warriors fans, Dubs Nation mm-hmm. will get upset when they hear me say that. That doesn't mean they can't play like that another two times. They can play like that again. I'm not saying like mm-hmm. that's the best they'll ever play. Mm-hmm. No, they can. Maybe they find their groove, and now this is how they're playing for the rest of the series. But I, I don't think they can play much better than that. Once again, can Steph Curry go for 48 instead of 36? Absolutely he can. I, can Clay Thompson have a, a higher scoring game? Sure, I'm not disputing that. But as a collective. I think that was their best punch, and they they won. I mean, they were – Steve Kerr is trying everything. He's trying everything that he can to get through this series, playing Steph Curry 40-plus minutes uh, every single night, messing with the lineups, and, you know, Draymond comes back and, you know, saying that Draymond's coming off the bench, and they'll, you know, cover that up to make it sound a different way. But he's trying everything mm-hmm. that he can to to get them through this series. And uh, I thought yesterday was was the best they could play. Andrew Wiggins has been really good this series. Like mm-hmm. we 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 knew mm-hmm. so much of this series rode on what Andrew Wiggins would be able to do, and he's been really good. One thing, this is where this isn't conspiracy. By the way, we understand how this stuff works. I think the schedule has really benefited. I think it's benefited Andrew Wiggins, and I think it's benefited the Golden State Warriors as well. Um, if the Kings are able to win on Wednesday, I think the way the schedule shakes out favors them with the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, every other day Mm -hmm. until this thing ends, be it Friday or Sunday. Um, but Wiggins has had far more legs than I expected. Uh, I know how springy is. I know how fast he, I know all of the things that he can do, but he's been able to sustain it far longer than I thought, especially after looking like game one got the best of him a little bit uh, to recover as quickly as he seemed to. And part of that may be in, in part of, part of what may help that is that he didn't really have to do it in game three Mm. because the Kings were moving so slow in game three, that the, the the pace of that game was so slow in game three and that game ultimately got kind of out of control there, you know, a little bit out of control there at the end of the game, maybe that benefited him, but don't want to take anything away. Andrew Wiggins, just as a basketball player has been extraordinary, but, but Andrew Wiggins under the circumstances has been really good. And he's been every bit, the difference maker that we were concerned a top tier Andrew Wiggins would be. Yeah, for sure, man. He's played really well, man. He, he's played really, really well. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. 909 Let's get Brian in here. Brian, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on guys? How you doing? We're good, good brother. Man. How you doing? Good. I actually, uh, I was out at Sky River uh, yesterday, was able to look at the game. I got put by all these uh, Golden State Warrior fans, though. <laughs> that sucks. I thought yeah. I was going to be around a lot of Sacramento Kings fans, and then I see Damian Barley come out with his uh, sleeves off looking like Triple H. I thought he was beating a dead horse in the back. Or, okay. Uh, all oh, right. Wait a we'll do that to that poor <laughs> Wait horse. a minute. You should. I don't know where you were at. I mean, there were Warrior fans in there, but there wasn't like a gang of them. You should have oh, just came where we was at. Yeah. Hey, guns, guns out, guns out. Well, you should have just came where we was out, man. There was, it was, I don't know where you was at. We was right there. It was fun, man. It just, uh, I just think they're a young team. And, you know, if they were a, a seasoned team, they would have done better with the crunch time. You know, and I, I would have rather seen somebody other, other than, uh, you know, I wish Fox would have taken the last shot, uh, but I understand. You know, you, you mishandled that. But I, 
we appreciate you, Brian. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out to the watch yeah, party. Man. Uh, yeah. Next time we tried to remove those, uh, those, those thing that, you know, those separators. So people knew that they could just come, you know, hang out up like a, at the front. Mm -hmm. Also the, the, the place was at capacity. So if you right. wanted to like sit down and eat, like you had to be, right. you had to be somewhere. You got to go where they, where yeah, you, you got to go to. Yeah. And that's ultimately what it came down to. We controlled uh, a lot of, we were able to control a lot at the beginning. And then so many people got there. It was just kind of like, get, get, get everyone in wherever you can. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get Jamil here uh, on the line. 916-909-1320. What's up, Jay? What's up, what's up boys? What's going on, big dog? You guys, man. I just want you guys to try to make me feel a little bit better, man. I'm I'm a little down, man. The sun's out and I feel blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> no I, I'm, 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 hey, Steph Curry calling that timeout with no timeouts, man. I mean, is that guy just gassed? I mean, is I, he, that's the I think that's the first time in his career that he does that. I mean, like like uh, you guys were just talking about, did they, did they just give us their best punch? Is that a sign of them giving us our their best punch with him calling that timeout with no timeouts? I mean, he damn near gave away the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want you guys to make me feel a little bit better about this, man, because a couple couple of my, my, my boys out here, a couple of Sacramento fans, man, we're just – we feel like these last two games, we kind of let get away. Oh, man. I mean, the third – the game three, I mean, the, the Kings just got outplayed. They got outworked with no one. Game four was a good game. Warriors came away with it, but that's the playoffs, right? That's yeah, the playoffs. That's, that's what happens. You're going to have situations like that, um, especially when you're talking about both teams taking care of business on their home court. So that's where that comes from. Now, if you're worried about De'Aaron Fox and everything, I understand being upset about that. But I'm on record as saying I think the Kings still have enough to win this series. I think the guy – now they're going to have to have everybody step up and, and and play, you know, as good as they possibly can play. But I we've seen it during the season. They're capable of it. Um, Davion Mitchell has played really well in this series. Malik Monk has played really well in this series. They're going to need something from TD. They're going to need something from Kevin Herter, along with Sabonis playing better and Harrison Barnes playing better. So there's still, there's absolutely, absolutely still a pathway to win this series. It's, it's far from over, in my opinion. You got two games um, for sure, possibly a game seven. Two of those possible three games are at your, on your home court. Hey man, well, this is this is far from over. Well, and 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 look at it this way too, Jay. Like all we heard after two wins at the Golden One Center was the Kings didn't do anything. They did what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They won their two games at home. Okay, cool. Warriors didn't do anything. They won their two games at home. They did what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Like we could flip the script here real quick if we just want to use you know like silly verbiage without giving the team credit. Go a step further. Jay, you want to feel better. There's only one team that has pressure to win on the road. Mm. And it's not Sacramento. There's more home games for Sacramento than there is Golden State. Mm -hmm. So if it just boils down to that, then it's only one team that has to figure out a way to win away from the uh, to win a game away from their home court. Obviously, Wednesday's game has been, you know, thrown for a little bit of a loop here with the news on De'Aaron Fox and the fracture in his index finger on his shooting hand and and all what this may entail. He's going to be listed as doubtful for that game. We're quite sure, and we're hoping in the hours approaching, you know, maybe that changes. I'm confident no matter what the, the injury report says, he's going to be a game-time decision. Mm -hmm. They're going, he, and I believe this falls primarily on De'Aaron Fox and and probably a, a, a an honest assessment of, of the coaches around him, if if he can contribute and be effective, I think they're going to utilize him. I don't know that the 30, was it 30, 31.5 or 32.5? I, I don't know that it's going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can have De'Aaron there to take a little bit of weight off of Davion and Terrence and perhaps to, to the point you were just making, Keegan and Harrison and Kevin Herter, great. What I'd really like to see is those other guys that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. the Kevin, the Harrison, the Keegan. Those guys, Keegan did a great job yesterday. Keep that going. Now Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes, get back to where you were earlier in this series uh, in games number one and games number two. Uh, Kevin Herter, get something going for the first time in this series. And Domas, play like the all-NBA player you're going to be here in, in, in a matter of a week or two. Be that guy, and I think the Kings are just fine. If I have this correct, the last time the Kings played this year uh, without De'Aaron Fox in a real game, you know, not anything towards the end of the mm -hmm. season. If I have this correct, 
it was OKC. Remember they had the two games in OKC. Fox did what he did in, in against the Clippers, Fox and Monk, 176 game. Mm-hmm. And they had the two games against Oklahoma City. In the first game, the Kings won. Uh, De'Aaron does the windmill dunk. Mm-hmm. Then he's out the next game. And they win 123-117. Uh, 29 from Harrison Barnes, 22 and 22, 13 and nine from Sabonis, mm. 20 from Kevin Herter. Mm. Uh, Davion had 15. Keegan had 13. Nobody on the bench had double figures. Trey Lyles had nine. Malik Monk had seven. Oh, that's it. 123, 117. That's it. That's what you need. No, it's probably not far off the score either. Yep. 